I love Italian fashion, the sense of style that Italians have as part of their DNA. Nobody is like them. Italian style is natural attitude. It doesn't have to be expensive, simple, but with good taste. So over the last 15 years, I've probably had close to 100 people mistake me for an Italian. They see my name, Antonio Centeno, and they assume, since I'm in the fashion industry, you must be Italian. Now, as far as I know, I don't have any Italian blood. Like a lot of Americans, I'm an eclectic mix. My family, though, on my father's side, came over from Mexico, and we can trace somebody bringing the name over from Spain, Portugal area a few hundred years ago. That being said, I never correct people. First up, I don't want to embarrass them, but also I don't mind the affiliation with the most stylish men on this planet. Which leads to the question, why are Italians so stylish? So this first reason is actually an anti-point, and it could be that they're not stylish, that simply they are creating a brand as a community that they want to project this, and that we are falling victim to what's known as the frequency illusion. Now, the frequency illusion is the combination of two human biases. One of them is going to be selective attention biases, and that's whenever we are looking for something and therefore we see it. Whenever you know you buy a certain type of car, you notice all of a sudden that car is all over the road. It's always been there, but now you started to actually see it. So that's selective attention. The next one is the confirmation bias. And this is when you believe something, you actually look for facts to support it. So basically the way this thing is working is it's a rigged system. We've got a feedback loop. Italians are stylish because because we think Italians are stylish, therefore we ignore all the unstylish Italians. And anyone that's been to Italy, you know that on the streets, not everyone is a style god. There are guys walking around that, yeah, just look like tourists, probably are tourists, but let's just say they are not dressed to the nines. They definitely don't have style, but it could be that we are just seeing stylish men because we're looking for them. Now, to a degree, this point has merit, but I do not think it explains Italian style, but I wanted to bring it to your attention because it is something that's real, and I do think that Italians aren't as stylish as we put them up to be in general, but there are a number of factors, in my opinion, that still make Italy one of the most stylish countries out there, and let's get into it. So the first real point about why Italians are stylish is because they've got the history. We're talking, so in America, we think history 100 years, 200 years, 300 years maybe. No, over there, they got thousands of years of style history. We're going back to the Greeks, who the Italians stole it from, but going back to the, you know, the Romans. They had style. And here's the thing, you had this empire. These guys are reaching out and they're grabbing the best fabrics, the best materials. And in Rome and some of the other top cities in the empire, I mean, they looked good. You basically, the clothing you wore sent a signal very quickly who you were and basically to give this person respect the color of the fabrics, the type of the fabrics, the jewelry, all of this right here. Basically, you didn't have to say anything. Your style, your image said everything for you. Even after the fall of the Roman Empire in the Dark Ages, when the lights went out across Europe, you still had beacons, and many of those were in Italy, these city-states that through trade, being on you know an area that was hard to invade, they were able to maintain so much knowledge when it came into how to make these fabrics, how to make the workmanship that went into the leather, and they actually maintained this knowledge. It went right into the medieval ages. So we saw the 11th century, 12th century, 13th century, this craftsmanship, this information being passed from generation to generation generation. And still, it was a big deal about how you dressed, how you presented yourself to the world. And that takes me to the next reason why Italians are so stylish is because of religion. Now, I'm not saying it's because God made them the most stylish. I am Maybe he had something to do with it, but I am saying that because of the position of the Vatican, and let's be honest, these guys cared a lot about the clothing and style. Nowadays, you know, we got a Pope that seems pretty cool. You know, he's not about the stuff, although you go and you visit the Vatican, you see all this gold, you see all this workmanship. You see these guys in very fine clothing, and it was a lot more opulent back in the day when it wasn't, you know, they were pretty open about, hey, this is status, this is wealth, and religion did a very good job of keeping classes, of keeping a separation of society based off of presentation and clothing. And the church had a lot of money. And so much of this, again, if you know anything about animals, oftentimes the peacock doesn't make sense from a, you know, a perspective of evolution, unless you know that the whole thing with the peacock and a lot of animals that present themselves like that is they show off so they don't have to fight. In men, what we see here, where you're able to peacock. We saw this in the 11th, 12th, 13th century, things like stockings, the way the Italian 
Italians would separate themselves from the different classes, from the younger men, from the older generation, is the use of color, the use of different styles. You would often dress in a manner so that it would force others to shut up when you walked in the room because they could tell this guy's got money, this guy has wealth, we're going to go ahead and defer to him. So, from the papal court to the Medici family, we saw groups actually using clothing as a way of actually an offense to be able to send that signal so that you wouldn't even mess with them. But was that enough to make the Italians so stylish? No. There's also the fact of industry. So, let's go and let's look at the way that Italy is broken up. So, for those of you guys that really know your geography or you're of Italian descent or maybe you are Italian watching this video, which by the way, if any of that applies to you, I would appreciate a like if you're enjoying today's video. But let's look at this map right here and you can see Italy is broken into 20 different regions and five of those regions actually are really strong and have a little bit more power. Now, what's interesting about these regions is each has an economic strength. Yeah, you've got crossing going over. But, you know, when you go to Tuscany, what are you going to see? Leather. It's all about the leather works. In fact, Tuscan leather, that would be an awesome fragrance. I need to talk to my friend Tom Ford about that. But in any case, if you go to Tuscany and you look at the leather works, and Michael Porter actually over at Harvard, he wrote about this in strategy. He actually broke out the Italian leather system. And what, why these clusters are so important and so powerful is that you've got groups of skilled artisans and workers and the industry, the factories all set up to support each other. And again, Italy has a wide variety of them in the fashion space, whether it be fabrics, whether it be manufacturing, whether it be, uh, you know, actually putting the shoes together, whether it be bags and a lot of these overlap, but it gives them a competitive economic advantage that has actually been there for over a thousand years in many of these cases. In fact, if you go look at some of the mills, some of these like seven, eight, like almost a thousand years, some of these mills have can actually trace their lineage back. And again, gents, it's not just the factory, it's the men and women working in them. Italy did a very good job of keeping their guilds. Nowadays, it's controversial. Maybe you compare them to unions or something like that, but they survived for a reason, in my opinion, and that's simply that they protected that information, that they made sure that, hey, if you are going to buy, you know, a fabrics guild or a shoemakers guild, and there were all types of guilds out there, but if you were going to sell something in that city, in that area, it had to not only meet certain standards, but it had to be approved. And I'm sure that there was a lot of graft, a lot of, you know, corruption and stuff like that. Point being though is it did work and it did keep the information. So, how did all this industry, all these factories make Italians more stylish? Because think about it. Just simply because it's local information. You can't help but kind of absorb this stuff. It's the same thing when you've got so many fashion brands, so many different types of industry that have to do with style and clothing. You've got friends, you've got family that all work in the industry. It, you may not even be into style, but the thing is your brother gets those free shoes or at a huge discount and so you're wearing, you know, those Ferragamos and yeah, they're expensive for most people, but you get a great deal or you get something passed on from your family. And we'll get into that here in a few minutes talking about how Italians are all about keeping things within the family. But because you're surrounded by this, you can't help but be more fashionable. It just simply is a way of life for everyone around you. It's the environment. It is something you can't almost escape from. And that takes me to the next point of why Italians are so stylish is they have a modern culture, a community that fully supports men dressing well. You know, 15 years ago, if you're dressing well, you would have been called a metrosexual. Nowadays, people don't even hear the term. It was derogatory at the time. Uh, I didn't ever like being called that or even using it in my writing. But uh, Italy has never had an issue with men actually taking care of their appearance and the way that they look. And because of that, because you've got a culture that really appreciates beauty. If you've ever, you know, been to Italy, you understand it's the details. It's it's not just, you know, the men, the women, you look really good as well. It's it's a way of life for Italians. I think it's pronounced fair bella figura. If I messed it up, let me know down in the comments. You guys know I love hearing from you whenever I mispronounce anything in Italian or French, which, hey, growing up in a trailer park in West Texas, they didn't teach us that stuff. Point being though, is looking your best every time you walk out the door. This is just common saying. It's just understood. You're not dressing up. You are dressing to go out. And an Italian woman, an Italian man, anytime they leave their house, whether it be going to the park, going to the grocery store, going out with friends, they dress appropriately. Fair bella figura, make a good impression. How you present yourself to the world. The next reason why Italians are so stylish, family. 
Now, if your father wasn't stylish, most likely your grandfather was. You got some uncles that look really good. And we, we take it for granted, but how you surround yourself, your environment has a huge impact on you. You just simply are around men that are wearing neckties or wearing sports jackets. Even if they're wearing t-shirts and jeans, there's an immaculate fit. They pay attention to their shoes. They mention the brands at the dinner table that they're going to go out shopping for. This information comes right in and young men, young women are all picking this up because you're surrounded by this. Even when you go to thrift stores, they are loaded to the gills with actually a decent selection. I mean, here in the United States, we've got so much fast fashion. And you are seeing this hit over in Italy. I'm not saying they're immune to it, but you also have a culture of people that pay attention to the quality of the clothing. They've had their parents and grandmothers say, if you're going to buy something, buy it of higher quality, buy it once, make sure that you're going to be able to repair it and make sure it fits you. This knowledge, again, most people ignore probably 90% of what their parents and grandparents say, but that 10% is hitting and it's sticking in. And let's not forget the negative parts as well, because if you don't dress to the expectations of your family, all of a sudden you're like, yeah, you're nobody's son. You know, we, we are going to disown you if you walk in the house looking like that. Not always, you may be, you know, a little bit of a toxic relationship there, but hey, you know, this stuff is it's all out there and it's all having an effect on the Italian mindset of how to live life, how to dress, even if you're just going to go get a coffee. If you're watching this video and you disagree, you're like, Antonio, you are full of shit. I want to hear from you down in the comments below. I always appreciate your kind comments. Maybe you're not so kind criticisms, but hey, I try to get better and I appreciate hearing from you guys. Next up, let's talk about the word splettatura and the Italian philosophy of style and individuality. This is another reason why they're so stylish. Now, this word actually came out of Italy, 1528, the book of the uh, Courtier. Uh, the idea here is that it was written for noblemen. It was the idea that, yes, you may look a little bit disheveled. You may look like, you know, you just woke up this way, but here's the thing. You spent two hours getting ready. You know, you see people they'll go through and they unbutton a button on their jacket. Why do they leave it unbuttoned? No, it's not that they forgot. It's simply they wanted to show you that actually this was a higher end jacket that actually does have functioning buttons. Nowadays, you're finding this on a lot of jackets, but 15 years ago was a little bit harder to find on made to measure. Point being is the small details matter. And that book was written and the philosophy and the idea has been around for even way before that, that yes, you got to know the rules. I think it was Paulo Picasso said, know the rules in and out, but be an artist and know how to break them. And a lot of Italians, they really pride themselves on this. They'll study under the masters. They understand the, you know, the mathematics, the, you know, the art of style, but then they'll go in it and they bring in their own individuality, the art, and they make it theirs. A great example of an Italian with sprezzatura was Giovanni Agnelli. Now, this guy right here was the principal and the founder of Fiat. This guy had tons of money, yet he was able to break rules. He didn't wear really expensive shirts. He actually bought shirts from Polo or from uh, Brooks Brothers, and he would go with that Polo collar that actually had a button down there. He would wear his watch right over the cuff of his shirt, which for a lot of people is a no-no, but the thing is, he understood the rules. He could afford anything, but he would choose to bring in these small distinctive features, and he made it look nonchalant, but it was all calculated. It was all about him sending the message that, hey, he's in charge. He can do what whatever the hell he wants. And this guy was a style icon, still is for a lot of men of style. Now, this next reason why Italians are so stylish doesn't have anything to do with clothing, more about personality, the way they speak, the way that they have these body, you know, hand movements. You know, what have they said? If you want to get an Italian to shut up, you tie up his hands. He's not going to be able to talk. Uh, a little bit of truth in that. If you ever have been around Italians, maybe a little bit louder than average, and it's actually culturally acceptable, Italians, they come off is confident. They come off as you notice them, you see them. Even if they're a sm it's a smaller guy, he comes off as like he owns the place. He's not afraid to raise his voice and he's just simply being himself. He's not trying to start a fight. He's not, you know, but he comes off. And this for many people, many people from outside cultures, they view this as confidence and confident men, confident women are viewed as more stylish, more attractive. All right, Jen, so we've established Italians are stylish, but how can you use this information to dress better every day? So putting this together, I did a lot of research, actually watched a lot of interviews of Italian women talking about style and so much of this applied to guys. And I thought it was a different approach, even though they talked about some of the same things I cover in my videos, they had a different way of thinking about this. And I really liked it. First up, dressing 
for your body. Now, I talk about dressing for your body type all the time, and there certainly is cl there is clothing that is going to accentuate certain things. It's going to not look good on different body types. But the women that this woman, she was like, "Hey, don't worry about any of that. Instead, focus in on what you love about your body." Versus what you hate. So many times we're trying to minimize versus actually focusing on what you love and in a sense, you know, having fun with it, flaunting it. Now, as a guy, maybe you're not flaunting it, but I know I've always been conscious about the size of my arms. I was a skinny guy around a lot of guys that spent time in the gym and maybe I should have spent more time in the gym, still have time, but you know, you got to work with what you got. Now, some of you guys have weight around the midsection, but maybe you've got broad shoulders. So, accentuate the shoulders with a jacket. I know for me, I love wearing jackets because then I don't think about my arms. I feel I'm more proportioned that way. And it was about finding ways, particular pieces that just make you feel great, that, you know, in a sense, bring balance to the overall look. That was the next thing that they talked about, bringing balance to your look and not trying to, you know, be too one dimensional. So, another word instead of balance, maybe it would be harmony. Make sure that if you look at yourself in the mirror and you should have a full length mirror, does your look, is it harmonic or are we being drawn to too many things? And that was the next point that was brought up is have one signature eye catching piece. Everything else should follow. Everything else should support. A lot of times, especially guys when they're just getting started trying to dress sharp, they put together just an amog. I, I would say it looks like Frankenstein. They're trying to bring too many pieces that grab attention together. Simplify, simplify. You want one piece. And if you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, there's too much, maybe I'm trying to pull off too much jewelry, maybe I'm trying to pull off too many accessories, go ahead and drop one get rid of it, cut down to the bare essence. Remember, try to keep it about one piece that you draw attention in the eyes to. So, what should that one piece be? Well, the Italians that I saw interviewing talked about three things that every great Italian pays attention to, make sure that they buy quality and that these could be eye-catching pieces. You know, again, not all at the same time. And if you do, make sure the other two are more muted. But first up, sunglasses. Italy, you got the sun. A lot of you guys down in Southern Cal, Arizona, Florida, maybe you're over in Southern India. Sunglasses are really great when you're in that area of the world where the sun's out. Even here in Wisconsin, I have to say during the winter, we've got the white snow out there. Sunglasses when you're driving are a must. Make sure that you get a brand. You don't need to spend hundreds of dollars, but you do need to find a style that suits you. I think so many guys, you know, easily, you know, they maybe default to, uh, I don't know, some sports sunglasses. That's not what you should do. Look for the classics. Look for aviators. Wayfarers are an amazing option and they're a little bit out there, a little bit more solid framed, but they will draw attention to the eyes. Maybe look at a classic pair of club masters. Now, guys, if you're watching this video and thinking, how can I be more stylish? Well, one of the simple things that you can do is to level up your skincare routine. So, over at Vitamin, we've got our new daily essentials system. This comes with a daily wash. It comes with your scrub a couple times a week, and it comes with your daily moisturizer. Gents, everything in here made with natural ingredients from the Australian Outback. This is everything your face needs for a full month so that you can start looking your best. And of course, Jens Vitaman being my company, I stand behind every product with a 100% money back guarantee. On top of that, down in the description of today's video, I've got a 51% off discount. When you go over and grab this set, you'll be able to save 51% on your first order. Now, Jens, this deal is not going to be around forever, so use it or lose it. Again, use that link in the description of today's video. Go over to Vitaman and grab your daily essential system. The next detail Italians pay close attention to, and you probably knew this one was going to be on the list, shoes, shoes, shoes. I remember reading years ago in one of these books back behind me how the Italians opt for no break. They want actually to show, they want to fully show off their shoes. And I get it. Their shoes, oftentimes you go to Italy, you're going to see all different styles, all different types. I know a lot of the shoemakers I've worked with all are having their stuff made in Italy because of the bold colors, the bold designs. And this is something that, you know, if you want that one foundation piece, I think for a guy starting off, shoes are easily the way to go. And you can just simply, maybe you, hey, you normally have black dress shoes. Well, maybe go for a black, you know, type of Chelsea boot or go for a monk strap, a double monk. You know, that's, I know that's been in fashion for 10 years and a lot of people feel it's kind of going out. I don't think so. I think it's classic and it's a good look. Maybe go for a whole cut. You can easily change up the style. Maybe go for a different color, 
oxblood, I think is so nice. And it's got, especially maybe with a black burnish on it, just right there on the leather. This right here will be the attention piece. You got that simple blue suit with a white shirt, maybe with a maroon tie, but right there, those shoes, everyone's going to be paying attention to those. And that third piece, your leather accessory. Maybe it's going to be the back cover of your phone. Maybe it's going to be your wallet. Maybe it's going to be the briefcase that you carry. Make sure you've got one that really is of higher quality that you can carry because this is something when you, you're dressed to the nines, you don't want to be carrying around a raggy, beat up old backpack that just yeah brings down the whole look. Now, this next one seems like a little bit more of an old school rule, but I see the point, especially when the women are dressing up, and that is have evening wear and reserve it for the evening. So, as men, I think we're a little, can be a little bit more versatile here. And the woman that was talking about this, she was in particular talking about women in Italy. If anyone's been out to some of the clubs in Italy or at night in Italy and Rome, you probably have seen glitter, you've seen beads, you've just seen women wearing stuff that sequins, it just draws attention in. But here's the thing, as a guy, you can bring in a little bit. I wouldn't go over the top, go hold no rhinestone cowboy here, unless it's really your thing and you want to go for it and own it. But I will say that, you know, if you've got a little bit brighter of a jacket, you've got some colors which draw attention. You've got some shoes with a little bit more shine. Nothing wrong with bringing those into your wardrobe, but maybe reserve them for the evening. Next up, buy less, but buy better quality. So, I've picked this up in Europe having married to a Ukrainian, but we'd spent time you know, traveling Europe. I noticed that people that didn't have as much money as I was maybe earning here in the United States seemed to have better wardrobes, better clothing. How did they do this? Because they simply chose to not buy all the junk that we seem to buy over here in a lot of the, you know, Western countries, North America. And they made sure every piece was something they're going to get miles out of. I knew women that simply, you know, they had only a few sets of clothing. They took very good care of it. They wore it again and again. Every time they wore because I didn't see them usually day in, day out. They just looked amazing. And that's what you want to pay attention to. So, I talked about it maybe briefly earlier, but a lot of these young Italian men, uh, I was watching YouTube, checking out like what they're wearing on a day-to-day -day basis. They're thrifting from their fathers from their grandfathers, from their uncles. So, look around. Is somebody wearing, you know, they just don't wear it anymore. And you could actually bring this cool 1980s or 1990s piece of gear, you know, flannels are in. So, bring one right into your wardrobe. Go, you know, check out your uncle's closet. See if something's in there that you can bring in, you know, for absolutely no cost, just simply the time to go through the closet. Another point that was talked about are fabrics that fit and move close to the body. So, in areas that, you know, it's colder, you're going to wear heavier clothing. Basically, there's a lot of stiff clothing out there. The Italians are all about the light weaves. And this is really nice because you can layer. If you're a heavier guy, learn from this because you can still layer without getting hot spots. Maybe look for a clothing with a bit of stretch. I know everyone's like 100% cotton on my shirts. You don't always have to have that. I think a lot of the modern blends really are doing a good job. But point being is go for these lighter weight fabrics. This is a heavier weight shirt and I can actually feel it, you know, underneath this lightweight jacket. But if you combine lightweight with lightweight with lightweight, what you're going to get is a really nice combination. That's what the Italians do really well. So, uh, consider that being able to layer even in, you know, relatively warm weather. I have to say, I also like the Italians thought on color. So, I give a lot of rules. I talk about percentages. I even have breakouts for that. I'll talk about using color as a spice. Once you know the basic foundational rules and you don't overdo it, then have fun. I just don't want you guys looking like a clown. They bring in one statement color piece and we're drawn to it and they really make it work. And let's not forget about casual wear. I know Americans, we love our casual clothing. We want to be comfortable over being stylish, but you can have both. And that's what a lot of the Italians talk about is that, okay, if you're going to wear casual sneakers, go for a really nice brand. Now, I'm not saying you got to go with Gucci. I've got friends that have all these type of Gucci, you know, slip your sneakers and stuff and they're relatively pricey, but man, and you know, for those in the fashion, you know, conscious world, I guess you could go for that, but make sure they're clean. If you're going to go with a no brand, you know, make sure that they look good, that they fit the outfit. And there's easy ways, I think, to be casual. You still pay attention though to the fit. Casual does not mean sloppy. And the Italians get this and they pull it off to perfection. Now, gents, if you enjoyed this video, I think you're going to love this video right here. I talk about why is the mafia so stylish? Yes, yeah, sticking with Italians, but getting into the little bit more of the guys from Sicily or at least originate from Sicily. Now living over in the US, but we have a lot of fun talking about the history, going into why are, why was the mafia so stylish? I mean, did they have to be? You know, yeah. Some good stuff, guys. I enjoyed making this video. I think you will love it. So, check it out right here.